Hi, today we're going to be taking a tour of Divi Cloud's new IAM Access Explorer module. And we're going to start off with a couple slides just to cover how this works and then we'll actually get into the product. So for starters, why is it that we're focusing on IAM? And, and it's really this concept of IAM being the new perimeter. Historically, when we're securing our data center, we lock down our firewalls and we're generally good to go. Uh, today, in, in this cloudy world, that doesn't quite hold up anymore. Um, not There's a bunch of services that aren't even controlled um, via kind of classic networking constructs. But at the end of the day, IAM is the overarching concept that controls all of our services within the cloud. So even if I've got a perfectly configured environment, if I get IAM wrong, almost nothing else matters because they can then go in and, and make whatever changes they need and um, generally wreak havoc within an environment. And so with that, looking at IAM, it's a very broad topic and there's lots of different um, existing and, and new capabilities to touch on. So I wanted to quickly get into where does Divi Cloud work today? And, um, and so there's two pieces. Um, first, Amazon itself, which is where this Access Explorer is first focused, um, does have some IAM capabilities. The Access Explorer, I'm sorry, the Access Analyzer is great for showing off cross-account access um, you know, between multiple accounts. Where are we trusting um, you know, different environments um, so that we can get a better understanding of my account perimeter? Um, but what it doesn't do is give us that understanding of who can do what and where within an account. Same thing on that core Divi Cloud side, we can pull in content from the AWS Access Analyzer. We can do kind of IAM configuration checks that don't have as much of analysis. Things like, is MFA turned on? Do I have old unused access keys? Um, and also there's um, permissions analysis we can do on that string matching side. As you can see here, things like, do I have the administrator access policy attached or explicit star dot star type permissions? But uh, that kind of core Divi Cloud isn't going in and, and really computing multiple levels of permissions to help us understand true effective access. And so with this, why is this so hard and why does this Access Explorer need to exist in the first place? And it's really, I think this slide highlights it the best. With IAM today, there's multiple different layers of where permissions can be applied. And so again, kind of that core Divi cloud is better at looking at like the identity policy, but that's only one piece of the puzzle. Really to understand who can do what and where, we need to aggregate all of these different layers. So it's not just user policies, it's not just resource policies, but it's SCPs, it's permission boundaries, it's all of these different things. And so what we need out of this is kind of a Venn diagram of when we take all of these permissions and we aggregate them together, Where's that overlap of where my true effective access is? And that effective access is really the core of what we're doing today. And so that's what we're gonna talk a lot about. And so with that, there's three different lenses that we're gonna be looking at this effective access um, within the product. Um, first is principles, um, which is users and roles. Second is resources, which is just as the, um, you know, just as it sounds. And the last is applications, um, which is just going to be a group of resources. But uh, the application use case is, um, you know, let's say that I've got a, um, you know, I've got a bunch of different resources that all make up some PCI application. For something like that, my auditors don't care about individual resource exposure. We care about overall, you know, where's my perimeter around these resources as it relates to IAM. One more thing to note, we'll touch on this a little bit more when we get in the um, get in the product, but um, but a lot of times what we're seeing is that IAM, people are, are doing less work with users and a lot more of a, uh, assumed roles. And so if the Access Explorer is taking these roles and helping you understand what all they have access to, that's a great start, but what we lose is kind of that last mile of, what users can assume those roles so that we can really tie it back to specific people all the way down to specific resources. And so for something like that, what we can do is we can actually take in data from like an active directory to say these particular users can assume these roles. And that gives us that kind of last mile of mapping of who can do what and where. Now, last, last piece on the slide side of things is, is what's next. 
you know, this, this effective access views is a really important starting place for helping understand, again, who can do what and where. But from here, once we've got that data computed, that's really the foundation for a lot of other really interesting use cases that we can now build towards as well. So that first bullet is, again, what we're going to um, see in the product, which is who can do what and where. But then from here, we're going to be tying this in more with, um, with alerting, with bots and automation. Um, once we've got the effective access, then understanding least privilege access for you know, what permissions do you have versus what have you been using um, becomes a whole lot easier. And so I think the point of this slide is really just to say, you know, this effective access is the starting point and, um, and you can expect a lot more coming out of this as well. So let's get into the Access Explorer and see how this actually works. And so as I mentioned, there's three different uh, kind of tabs, concepts, lenses with the applications, principles, and resources. So from the principal side, what we can do is say, all right, well, who can do what within my environment and what our resources can they see? And you can see I've got some users here, I've got some roles, and then these federated users came in from that Active Directory import. But now let's say I wanna go in and look at what sort of access a particular user has. And I wanna say, what all can Amara do? Well, I can go and click in on Amara, and I can see that Amara has almost 8,100 different resources that she has some level of permissions to. So already, you know, this sounds like it's probably a pretty permissive user. And we can see that there's also a lot of rights that she's got on these different resources. But now from here, if I want to drill in further and say, okay, well, for some resource, what level of access does she have and why does she have it? I can go and click into any of these to then get more information. And I can see this, we've, we've enumerated all of these different permissions that she has on this resource. I've got almost 270 different individual permissions that she can go and, and, um, and do on this resource. But the follow-up question is then, okay, well, well why? How, how did we get to this point? And again, there's a couple different places we can see. Um, if, in this case, this route table had a resource policy attached, we would show you that here. Um, I don't even think we can attach route tables um, to specific policies nowadays, so we don't have that here. A lot of times this is more kind of classic for like S3 buckets and all those other resources that have their own policies nowadays. If we had any SCPs that were, um, were blocking access, we would show those here as well. We don't. And so we can see that all these permissions that Amara has on this particular route table are all coming straight from kind of her user itself. And so I can go and click in and see that she's got a bunch of different policies attached. I can slice and dice this right here to see, you know, what combination of, um, you know, of these policies grants her this access. I can expand any of these policies to see that, oh, okay, like, you know, EC2 star is probably giving us a lot of these actions. And, um, and just generally now within any context of a user and a resource, we can start to get in and explore more about, you know, why are things the way they are. Now the flip side of this is, okay, we can say for a particular user, what all can they access? But what if I'm trying to understand that boundary for a particular resource instead? And so we've got a bucket that we, we talk a lot about here, which is our, um, our super secret data bucket. This is the bucket that cannot be exposed and we need to understand, you know, what all, um, you know, what all can, uh, can touch this resource, what can list it, what can make changes and all of that. And so when I drill into the bucket, I can see I've got 46 different principles that have some level of access into this bucket. Some of these are service roles, some of these are admin, but then we've also got a lot of other roles here with, um, you know, with various levels of exposure um, or permissions. And so again, just like we did for Amara, we can now drill into the users, come back to that effective access page to say, okay, well, well, who can do what here? We've got this Columbus user. Yeah, no bucket policy in this case, no SCPs. We do have a boundary policy, but we also have a ton of other permissions that again are giving us these 51 permissions that Columbus has on this bucket. And I can go and I can slice and dice this. See, even if I remove this full access managed policy, I still have a lot of permissions. And again, this is now the starting point of being able to start to pull these different 
permissions together so that I can ask informed questions and make sure I can get my IAM configured the way I want it. Now the last piece here is, is what about from this application group? Um, as opposed to just like that one super secret bucket, what about my collections of resources instead? And so for that, I've got a bunch of applications here, and so I can drill into Divi Demo. I've got 12 resources that make up this particular app, and they're all listed here. But now if I want to understand that, that really kind of IAM perimeter, I can go over to the Principles tab and see I've got 65 different principles that can do something on one of those 12 resources. And now just like the Principles tab, just like the Resources tab, we can now start to drill into any of these to get more information about you know, what all resources a particular principle can touch. Drill in here, get more context, understand what all permissions kind of got us to this point. So again, we can keep on really understanding the full scope of who can do what where. So with that, that's, um, that's a quick tour of the Access Explorer. Thanks for your time and uh, please uh, give us a shout if you have any questions or would like to get more, uh, more information on what we do here. Thanks.